What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be upgrading my base steering wheel to this fancy M Sport one, and we're also gonna be adding these carbon fiber paddle shifters. Now, because we're going to be dealing with airbags, you always wanna make sure that you disconnect the negative terminal of your battery located back here with F30, F32, or a couple other BMWs. So with a 10 mil, just loosen it like that. Just take it off and push it down to the side. Now when it comes to actually removing the wheel, the first thing you need to do is you need to remove the airbag. Now with the base wheels and the sport wheels, basically what BMW does, they have this little slit in the back in the leather and you insert a T20 or a T25 in there. You lift it up, you release the airbag you pull that out and then you can take the wheel off the problem is whenever you use a tool like that in the back bmw starts with this nice slit and then it ends up just being a gaping hole and it doesn't look very good so what we're going to do is we're going to show you an easy way to do it and it's not going to damage your oem wheel so if you want to sell it or anything it's going to be in pristine condition so the first thing you need to do is just release that lever and then we're going to separate this plastic okay, so you can just um, be pushing up and pulling down, a little bit of a tight fit, and you're going to take this piece and you're going to pull that straight down, just like that. We're just going to slide that in there and out of the way. So basically the way that the airbag works is it has these two little levers, little latches, and they're going to clip onto the back of the wheel. So instead of, like I said before, messing up the nice wheel, is you take your pick tool and you put it behind that release clip on this side. And then you can start to pull out this side of the, the airbag. Okay, just like that. There's not a tremendous amount of room to do this as you can see me crawling around here. Okay. There you go. So once you have it loose, so we're gonna pull it straight out. And there's one connection up here. Then with yours, you have a connection at the top there. And there's another connection right there. You're going to disconnect that and pull it out of the car. So then what you want to do is disconnect the other connection that's in here. Typically works best if you have some kind of pick tool because it's really tight. And it's possible you're going to have a third little connection down below if your wheel is heated. This wheel is not heated, so we don't have that. So now what we want to do, push the wheel down and lock it in place because you're going to have to hold it pretty tight with your knees. Then with a 16 mil, yep, 16 mil, you're going to break that bolt loose like that. And you can hand twist it out. Now with BMW wheels, they have this little indentation. So if you can see over here, if you look right here on the center column, there's a little groove. And if you look right there, there's another groove. BMW makes it so it's super easy if you have everything lined up to put the wheels on and to take them off. If you try to put it on incorrectly, it's not gonna work, but as soon as you line those up, it's gonna slide right on. So at that point, so at this point, you can just take your wheel and we are ready to get the new one ready. So as you can see, the clip is fully engaged. So what we were doing before is we pried off the plastic so you could see it and then you take your trim tool, or a pick tool, and you wanna just very carefully work it out, just like that. And then you take the other side, and you work it out, just like that. Make sure that it doesn't actually clip back on. That's kind of what happened to me. And then a little bit tight, and you can just pull it out, just like that. Okay, so we have the old wheel out. We have our new M Sport wheel ready to go, but we can't just put it on like this. We need to install paddle shifter extensions. These are the Keys Carbon, Dry Carbon, Matte Finish amazingness. So we're going to install these. So to do that, what we're gonna do, we need to remove the old paddles. So there's a little screw in there. It's a T20. A little squeaky. So we're not gonna fully remove the paddle because we don't need to. You're just going to take that little screw out. And we're gonna flip this over. 
And basically the way that these are held in, they're just by this little pin. So if you look, I'll get my pick tool so you can see. If you look right there, that's all that's holding this entire paddle shifter together. So you'll notice that one side has uh, a larger piece of plastic and the other side has a smaller. So as you'd imagine, you just take a pick tool and you push from the small side and then you can pull it out. Okay. And then once you pull it out, you can separate this just like that. Now as far as the electronics go, all we really need to do is leave that there, but we do need to get the paddle shifter ready for installation. So make sure that you have the correct one. And you'll notice that on your OEM paddle, if you have this style, if you have the F80, it's gonna be a little bit different. But this style, the plastic isn't removable. So what we do is we include this little piece of trim. So what you need to do is take a screwdriver, and remove that little screw that's holding it together. Just set that to the side. And we're gonna start with this piece here. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna get this little piece in here and this little piece over there to slide into the ridge here and also over here. So you're gonna put it on just like this. And while you're sliding that in there, you want this piece to slide in there. So once you're all done, it's just gonna look like that. Then you're gonna take your back plate, goes on just like that. And then you can take your little screw and put that in there. And you can tighten it down. We're going to put it together, try to do it as sideways as I can for you. You're gonna put it together like that. And then you're going to slide the electronics this way to make sure that everything fits in nice. Then you're going to take your that little plastic piece and you're gonna slide it in again. Slide it in from the same way you did before. It only goes in one way. You do a little sample clicking and that is pretty much it. So at this point, you can flip that over. We're gonna take our screw, put that in. We're gonna switch back to that T20. tighten that up and you can already see the drastic difference from this one right there it kind of looks like an elephant ear to this nice sleek carbon fiber design with the extension so it's a little bit bigger it feels great in your hand and it looks really really good take the top and you can snap that all together make sure the back is snapped the front okay we are golden so now I'm going to lower it again because we're going to need to hold it with our knees again so that we can get the leverage we need for 62 Newton meters. We're going to take the new wheel, look for that little groove. It's gonna fit in just like that. Okay, then you're going to take this little wire up there, you're gonna connect that. And we're gonna take our bolt, again it's a 16 mil. And this is going to get torqued down to 62 Newton meters. All right, that's torqued down. And you can take your airbag. Plug that in. Make sure everything's fully snapped in. Take your bag here, just press it straight in. And then all we need to do is connect the battery and it's fully installed. As long as you use the correct airbag, there's no coating required and you won't have any lights. We're done. Okay, we are down to our final mod as Justin's wrapping up his trip here. So we are going to be installing this P3 Cars vent gauge and although it looks wildly unimpressive right now, it is so cool, it's gonna get mounted right here. We're gonna show you how to do it. It's gonna monitor your boost. It has zero to 60 and just so many other features. I used to have one of these in my car a long time ago and I'm about to put another one in, spoiler alert. So with that, let's get started with the installation. The first part of the process is we need to remove this vent. It's not really held in by much, so just grab the corner. You don't even need a trim tool or anything. And just very carefully just work your way 
around and just pull it out. And as you can see, it's just held in with these little spring clips up here and these spring clips down here. Next, we need to pop off the face of this vent. So if you look on the bottom, it's held in with these one, two, three, four clips. And on the top, a little harder to see, just one, two, three. So what you do is just take a, some kind of pick tool and you just very carefully just route it under here and just start to release the different clips. Yeah, once you get those, those first three, it literally just comes off that easy. Okay, then once you've done that, we need to remove the top two vents. So again, just take your little pick tool and you can just kind of work it out from over here. And then in your kit, there is a little slat connector. So you're gonna to wanna to take this off of here. They just tape it on the screen because it's so small and it's easy to get lost. And you're gonna take off this little piece of metal over here. Then you're going to take it and you're gonna clip it on here, just like that. And then you're gonna clip it on here, just like that. So when you're done, this is what it's going to look like. And then you're also going to have this little side piece here. And this is what your vent is going to look like now. Now you can reach your hand in here and you can pop out this piece of trim. What normally helps a lot is if you take your weather stripping and you just pull it straight down. It's gonna help get it out of the way. You just pull it like that and then you pull it towards you and it's going to release. Once you've done that, you're going to take your, your wire here, your gray wire, and you're going to feed it through the, the left side and it's going to come out the bottom just like that. And line those two up. And before you can snap the top in, line these last two up. Once you've done that, you can take your trim again, just put the bottom on, then you can just clip the top back together, and we can remove this little screen protector, and that's how you install that. So once you've done that, you're gonna take this wire, and this goes through the hole and out the, out the side here. With the rest of this, you can just take it, and all you really need to do is just push it back in, just like that. So at this point, we're left with the P3 gauge, which is in the vent with this little um, ethernet looking connection. You have this wire right here that has the OBD, and then you also have the control module. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to take the OBD, and I'm gonna plug it in. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to see, but all you need to do is just plug it in, and then you can take that little wire and you can route it up here. So basically at this point you have this wire which goes up here, you can't see a thing. It gets routed behind and then you have this wire. And then all you need to do is plug it in and secure it. So we'll take this side and we'll plug that in. And then take this side, plug that in and instantly you can see that Everything was working just fine. All right, so we just started the car real quick. You can see the coolant temperatures. Um, you can see how fast you're going, zero. <laughs> um, you can see your, your battery voltage, which is really nice. Um, there's just tons of different features in here. Your IATs, your EGTs, ignition. Look at this, you can have pretty much anything you want here. Um, you can even do things like AFR, you can do 0 to 60, you can do your boost numbers. I mean, that's probably one that most people are going to leave it on. Um, but we're just going to turn the car off for now. And then what, once you get to this point, all you really need to do, we're going to get some zip ties, and we're just going to wrap this up, and then there's this little piece of metal in here that we like to zip tie it to. And then after that, it is fully installed. I love interior modifications because that's where you spend your time driving. The quality of the materials and the overall aesthetic can change the whole driving experience. Even subtle changes like these carbon fiber paddles and this vent gauge just scream quality and attention to detail. Alright, so that wraps up all the videos that I shot with Brian. Again, huge thank you to KeysMotorsports.com for hooking all this up and of course Brian for his expertise installing the stuff. 
Uh, the links for the pedal shifter and the gauge are gonna be down in the description if you guys wanna check those out. So for the vent gauge, I know a lot of people have been asking about it and we kind of rushed the install because it was like the last hour that I was there before I had to leave. But um, I'm actually gonna do a full dedicated video just on that. There's like a lot of functions and features that we uh, kind of glossed over in this video, but it's definitely deserving of its own video. It's honestly one of the coolest things that we installed in my opinion when I was out there. So for the steering wheel itself, Brian actually found this one for me in a local scrapyard. This isn't something that they like sell on their website or have inventory, but if I can find a link on eBay, I will link it down below in case anyone wants to swap out their steering wheel. All right, so for those of you who stuck around to the end, you got a little sneak peek of what's coming up next. You can see we've got this AWE exhaust. Again, huge thanks to Keys Motorsports. They've really been hooking up this build. And then also just came in the mail the other day, we have the Bilstein B16 coilovers. I know my car looks like a monster truck right now. Everybody's been uh, reminding me on Instagram, but uh, look forward to these very soon. I'll probably do the exhaust first. I think it'll be easier to get underneath the car before I lower it, so we're gonna take care of that. But I'm really looking forward to both of these. Be sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on these installs. But uh, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.